Next guest here on Talk 100.3 is no stranger to the studio. She's been on Talk Breakfast and now she's joining us here on TSB. She is a legend of Dubai TV where she's been a media consultant for many a years with her video production company TI22 Films and now she is the brains behind a new television show which happens each weekday on Dubai One called DXB Today. You're so busy. Reem Alhuni, thank you very much for making the time to join us in studio. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. It's great to have have you on your your passion let's go back to the start where did your passion for film and tv and video come from oh my god such a long story but i grew up totally obsessed with the world of film and tv and to be honest it started with my very first internship at the age of 16 when mbc was still based in london and i still to this day remember that experience of walking into a tv studio for the very first time and realizing oh my god this hobby of mine watching tv can actually become my profession and it's been an obsession ever since I mean, you know, blessed are those people who actually can convert their passions into their, their professions. But it's not an easy task, right? It's not like waking up at a certain time, going to office, clocking in at nine, leaving and you know, clocking out at six or whatever. Every day is different. Every day is new. Every day, newer challenges. And, and you can't say, ah, oh, this is my best work because you know that probably the better one is yet to come. I think the other thing people don't realize is just what goes into producing any TV content or mm. any kind of video content, to be honest, um, and the hours involved as well. I think it looks so glam on the <laughs> outside and people are like, oh, that looks like fun. It, it, so many people think it's easy, including our producer, Pranav. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll have words yeah. with him later. <laughs> uh, no, but, but seriously, when you, you're putting together a half hour show, yeah, how much of your day for people that are, that are sitting there thinking, oh, everyone just turns up at you know 8.25 yeah. and the show happens, how much time goes into putting in a half hour show? like that I mean to be honest because we're a daily show much like yourselves it's mm. kind of a case of you need guests every day you need content every day and obviously it's a visual medium so we have to plan in advance and we're out there filming content and editing it um, so it's a full team round the clock to be honest um, just to keep ourselves fresh and ensuring that everything we put out there is as timely as possible I think the one thing I want to stress is obviously anyone who's been in the industry knows like the best times to film are sunrise and sunset <laughs> and if you're going to get golden hour if you're going to get that perfect shot means you're often waking up at 2, 3 a.m in the morning so you know put the glam aside long hours are involved yeah I mean uh, see you know hard work and persistence all of this kept aside what is that one thing that you actually look forward to every day when you pack your bags go out on the sets to film you know, for me, it's a, it, it varies on the project that I'm working mm -hmm. on. So right now, because of the TV show, the TV show is quite exciting. And it's about what are the stories we can tell that people maybe haven't heard of before or the nice. guests we can shine a light on. Or, you know, I'm very, I don't want to tell the same story that everyone's heard everywhere else, you know, and, mm -hmm. and it's what can we uncover. So I know, you kind of know when you've got that hidden gem or where you've sure. got that guest who, you know, you know is going to add spice to the show. So I think that drives me on a day-to-day -day level. Um, operationally, I'm a big fan of just the gallery and live experiences. I think mm -hmm. that gives a certain buzz that you don't get uh, in most uh, most places. And obviously, if it's if I'm working on more corporate stuff, then it's how do you make it look as visually stunning as possible. So then the cinematography side plays into right. that. Yeah, it, there's a growing need for visuals, and we were just dis uh, discussing this just briefly off air that uh, everyone from tradespeople to real estate agents uh, are needing visual content. Um, how hard is it for some people? Because I'm someone who, I do a lot of things between its gigs or hostings, or but I, I still sometimes find it hard to do a video. Um, we all do, but we get a block, oh, it's not good enough, oh, we'll try a few times. You know, what's your advice for someone who might be in that position where they understand that it's important, but they've got that blockage? Honestly, I am so passionate about this topic because I genuinely feel everybody out there needs to be producing video content. It really doesn't matter what level of experience you have or what industry you're in. And you'd be surprised to hear, I mean, I'm, I'm going to ask you guys, do you know the number one industry that actually benefits from video right now? If you were to guess, what would it be? Real estate. Oh, I'd say real estate in this city. Medical. Medical, uh, because how? the first thing you're going to do if you're going to check out a hospital, a doctor, you're going to Google. And then you're going to Google and you're going to want to see what the facility looks like, what the doctors have to say. It adds a whole level of credibility that you can't find just by you know, a document. But when you see it on video, that credibility level increases. Um, and even more so, not just industry, I think it's seeing the CEOs themselves mm. on camera. And I see so many people who are just too shy. They just maybe haven't jumped over that hurdle or, or given it a go. But the percentages are crazy. 
crazy. It's as high as 77% of people who are more likely to do business with you if they've seen you on camera. Because uh, going back as a kid, I can remember Richard Branson when he was at his height. He was the high-profile CEO, did the cool stunts, right. had the private island, and everyone wanted to be associated with his virgin brand wherever it was. And now we look in every in almost every business from Elon Musk to Bill Gates to whoever it is to um, to Steve Jobs when he was running Apple you had to have a visual presence in order for the market to believe in your product. Totally. And I mean, I'm obviously very passionate about video, but it stems way beyond that as well. It's the importance of growing your personal brand. And I think just the consistency of being out there, sharing your message. And that's why I often tell people, it really doesn't matter what industry you're in. You are an expert in that field. So how do you now take your knowledge, embrace your niche and start sharing that with others because there are going to be people who want to learn from you and you just have to start getting yourself out there but it's not it's it's easier said than done to be very honest right i mean we probably have a little bit of an advantage of being in the industry uh, for for a few years now so that we we can say oh yeah it's just a microphone turn it on we'll talk turn the camera on and and we will go on the roll but for someone who's probably coming from a very different field medicine for you you mentioned that right a doctor who studied years to master every single ailment and 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 you know uh, the procedures to take care of human beings now has to learn something new. So when when you face some a challenge like this, how do you tackle that? Well, it's funny you say that because we actually run regular workshops mm-hmm. specifically to help CEOs get in front of the camera. And um, I've seen that evolution. I've seen it happen. There's always a bit of nerves to begin with. And a lot of it is associated with what are they going to say? Right. So mm-hmm. when you actually break that down and make it really simple for them and kind of step by step, you know, you start by introducing yourself, you give them a hook, you give them val- give value and you end the video. And it's just getting confidence in the content. And for a lot of people, once they're clear on what they're going to say and they've had that first experience on camera and they watch themselves they almost can't believe they did it so I think a lot of people don't even want to give it a try but what I would say is push yourself get out of your comfort zone even do it on your phone at this point everyone has a phone um, and just start practicing because once you've got over that initial hurdle it gets much easier that's great advice because we have a lot of CAOs that come in and they want to and they want to have every single question and answer scripted before they come and then when they finish they always they always say oh, it was much better when we just had a chat. And we go, yeah, we tried to tell you that. <laughs> but you know, that's always the case. Yeah. So I have a number of people who want to use an autocue, for example. I'm like, mm. do away with the autocue. Pe- or, or don't write it down. People can see your eyes going yeah. backwards and forwards. If anything, when the message comes from the heart and you're just sharing clear facts and information, your video is going to do so much better for you. Of all the people you've worked with, has there been one client or one transformation that, that's really blown you away? There have been a few. I'm going to pick two. Um, one was a coach who, to be honest... It it, it fascinated me because I just thought a coach, she's a speaker, she talks to audiences every day. Why is she having this challenge getting on camera? It took about a year of convincing her, just just give it a go, just give it a go. And once she did and she saw the results, she was doing it kind of day in, day out. But a second example is, I think a lot of people know Lucy Chow. She's well known in the region, um, in the financial space. And what I found interesting is she's often called on panels and, you know, she's, she's very popular. But she, was, she actually said to me, why should I do it? Because there's a lot of information out there already about the financial space. What have I got to add? I'm like, well, how many people are saying it from your perspective? She's female, she's Chinese, she's Canadian, she lives here. Yeah. That's a very unique perspective. Um, how many people are saying it with that voice? And she said, okay, I'll give it a go. Within a year of posting regular content, she was named one of LinkedIn's top 15 voices in MENA. Wow. Um, so there are two things here. One is like, don't underestimate your knowledge. There's someone out there who'll gain value out of it and the second is consistency so it doesn't work to just put one video out there and hope the planet is listening you need to be out there on a regular basis you you know putting out content which is within your field of work is one thing but then you know i consume a lot of content digitally and there are doctors who are coming on tiktok and and posting dance videos does it dilute (laughs) their brand does does it dilute their image i honestly don't think so i think we're in a world where it's just about being top of mind and Mm -hmm. getting in front of an audience and I promise you that dancing doctor is getting more inquiries than the one who isn't. (laughs) Well, there's one singing dentist. (laughs) Um, I I, I happen to know a lawyer on TikTok who's doing incredibly well. So Uh I think, you know, you underestimate that at the end of the day, we're all individuals, we're all people, we're all on TikTok and Mm -hmm. it's about finding that content that resonates with you. So I don't think it really impacts your credibility. I think if anything, it amplifies your message. 
Reem, it's lovely to hear how passionate you are about this topic. I so am. Yeah. <laughs> I could keep going. We could keep going and going and going. And you probably can. If people want to uh, see more of your stuff, they can. Fo- you're very, very active. I love your social media work. Thank you. Uh, the best handles people can contact you on? Um, I'm on my name, Reem El Hoodi. Um, so it's R E I M E L H O U N I. And I'm pretty much on my name everywhere LinkedIn, Instagram, wherever. And of course, the big TV show, DXB Today. It's at 8 30 p.m. each weeknight. Uh, you can see it on Dubai One. Any sneak peeks of what you've got coming up tonight? Oh, tonight. You're going to have to tune in. It's okay. only a few hours away. We'll have to but find. I can tell you that we have an exclusive interview with Hans Zimmer, which is very exciting. Oh, he's, he's a big he's, name in town. Yeah. Yep, yep. So we've got a big two parter. Half of it's on tonight, half on Monday, but it's one worth tuning in for. Yeah, his music is phenomenal. Yeah. Even Pranab, when he was supposed to be working, was listening to his songs. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, well done. Uh, and he, that's a great exclusive to get, Reem. Thank you very much for coming in and sharing part of your story. And don't forget DXB today, 8 30 p.m. each weeknight.